Hi, hometown. This week we've been talking a lot about leadership and we've been looking at a very tough verse in uh, Romans 13. It says this, everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from God and those in position of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. Well, that's a tough verse. There's a number of other verses in the Bible that talk about our responsibility of, of a following uh, fallible leadership. But we're in a cultural context right now that we'd rather be talking about the leader's responsibility to lead well rather than our responsibility to follow well. Well, I get that because we're acquainted with some pretty bad leaders. Well, Jesus was acquainted with a pretty bad leader too. Think of Pilate. Remember what uh, Pilate, Jesus said to Pilate when Jesus was standing there about ready to order him to be beaten and crucified. Jesus said to Pilate, this is John 19 verse 11, you would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. Wow. Caesar really didn't give Pilate his position. Caesar really didn't give Pilate his power. It was given to him by God. So it doesn't matter what human means brought the leader to power, whether it was by monarchy or appointment or by election. And it doesn't matter whether the power itself is just or unjust. The text says that God is behind all leadership. And because of that, because God himself placed some fallible or fallible leaders in place, we have some responsibility to follow. Now, notice how I use the word some. As I said in the video yesterday, there are limits to following leadership. But I want to return back to our own responsibility to have a heart to follow a leader. And I want us to think a little bit about the difference between David and his son Absalom. We've been looking at that leadership crisis at the weekend services. David's attitude towards authority was completely different from his own son's. Who was king before David? It was Saul. And Saul was one lousy leader. And he had it out for David. So much so he wanted to kill David unjustly, out of jealousy. So David fled. There are times where we should flee from authority. You know, the early Christians, they fled from cities where they were experiencing bodily harm. Uh, if you're a spouse and you're being abused, then please flee. If you're a church with, in a church with toxic leadership, then please leave. David fled. Yet it's interesting that David continued to treat Saul with respect, even under those circumstances. Twice David had the ability to uh, take revenge or go tit for tat and, and even get rid of Saul. In one instance, David was hiding in a cave and Saul came in to relieve himself. So we'll pick up on that text. This is uh, 1 Samuel 24, verse 4. Now's your opportunity, David's men whispered to him. Today, the Lord is telling you, I will certainly put your enemy into your power to do with him as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of the hem of Saul's robe. But then David's conscience began bothering him because he had cut Saul's robe. He said to his men, The Lord forbid that I should do this to my Lord the King. I shouldn't attack the Lord's anointed one, for the Lord himself has chosen him. So David restrained his men and did not let them kill Saul after Saul had left the cave and gone on his way. Wow, what a, what a soft conscience. He felt bad about cutting off Saul's robe, the very man who was trying to kill him. I mean, cutting off a corner of a robe seems like such a little thing, but David's conscience was bothered. So why was his conscience bothered? Because he still recognized Saul as the Lord's anointed. God had put Saul in place as king, and David respected what God did, not necessarily what Saul was doing, but he respected what God had done by placing Saul as king. And after, after uh, God removed Saul, Dave honored Saul's memory out of respect for Saul's position. And you can read about that in 2 Samuel chapter 1. David's words towards Saul were so gracious. 
In contrast, Absalom, David's son, led a rebellion against his own father. Why? Clogged courts. People evidently were not hearing their cases quick enough. What was the real reason for that rebellion? Well, the stated reason was clogged courts, but that wasn't the real reason. The real reason was Absalom's heart. He was bitter at his dad, and that bitterness did not get resolved, but it came out sideways by planning a rebellion against the Lord's anointed. You know, you see the issues in our own heart when it comes to leadership, it's extremely important because if we're angry and that doesn't get resolved or we get a little bitter and that doesn't get resolved, then it's going to spill out in unhealthy ways, just like it did with Absalom. I want you to remember that leaders in the Bible, they have a God-given purpose. Civil leaders are servants of God for your good, it says in Romans 13. Church overseers are to shepherd for, care for the church in which he purchased with his own blood. That says that in 1 Peter 5. Fathers are to train and instruct their children for their good, Ephesians 6 verse 4. Mothers are to love their children, Titus 2 4. Husbands are to lay down and nourish and cherish their wives, Ephesians 5 25. And all these positions or leadership are to use their position of strength and power to love and care for those who they lead. Yet, I understand that you've made me have burned, may have been burned by leaders in the past. But isn't it better to be a part of each institution that God has created, like government, family, church, and follow the leader of each institution rather than abandon it? I mean, isn't it better to be a part of a family with a father? even if the father's imperfect? You know, statistics show that families without fathers just don't do well. And isn't it better to have government that enforces law rather than live in anarchy, even if law is enforced unevenly? And isn't it better to be intimately part of a church under the care of pastors than to be an independent Christian? I mean, one of the very sad things that's going on in current Christianity is the high and in the increasing number of people who are not even affiliating with the local church at all. You know, George Barna, the famous uh, Christian pollster, claims the number is now way over 30% of Christ followers who are not even a part of a local church. And yet God has established the local church, that fallible local church for our good and better for our lives to be a part of a mediocre church than not to be a part of a church at all. Golly, think about the uh, the church at Corinth, the, the church that Paul wrote letters to, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and read through those letters and see just how many problems that church had, and it was a lot of problems. And yet Paul never told the church, well, just leave it. The local church is part of God's plan to develop our lives and part of that plan is placing us under the care of pastors. You know, one of the, the saddest verses in the entire Bible is the very last verse in the book of Judges. Judges chapter 21, verse 25. This would be a verse worth looking up. It says this, In those days Israel had no king. All the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. In the period of the Judges, there was some bright spots, there were some low spots, but generally through the book of Judges, Israel just kind of spiraled down. Do you really want to be in a situation where people do whatever is right in their own eyes? I don't. If not, then recognize God placed leaders and follow. You know, one of the bright spots, though, in the book of Judges is the leadership of Deborah. She inspired Barak the leader of the army, to take action. He rallied the troops. God gave them a great victory and they defeated the enemy. But not everybody in Israel followed his and Deborah's lead. You know, when the battle call was made to rally together for battle, only a few tribes of Israel responded. The rest, they just stayed at home, minding their own business. They were more committed to their own plans. They didn't want to give up what they were doing for the sake of the whole but after the victory, these are the first words of praise out of Deborah's and Barak's lips. This is Judges chapter 5, verse 1. Another great chapter to read. 
It says this, On that day, Deborah and Barak, son of Abinuam, sang this song. Israel's leaders took charge, and the people gladly followed. Praise the Lord. Well, they were praising the Lord for two things. Number one, leaders led. They took charge, because leaders don't always lead. Secondly, people gladly followed. They were praising the Lord for that, because people don't always gladly follow. And in this incidence, it was a mixed bag. Some people gladly followed and others didn't. But those who did got to experience a victory. God gave a great victory through leadership and through fellowship, both. And that's what Deborah and Barak were praising God for. And the rest of the song, it's recorded in chapter 5, describes the tribes who did follow and describes the tribes who did not follow. Here's a part of the song. The princes of Issachar were with Deborah and Barak. They followed Barak, rushing into the valley. But in the tribe of Reuben, there was great indecision. Why did you sit at home among the sheepfolds to hear the shepherds whistle for their flocks? Yes, in the tribe of Reuben, there was great indecision. See, they didn't know whether they should follow or not. Gilead remained east of the Jordan. And why did Dan, the tribe of Dan, stay home? Asher sat unmoved at the seashore, remaining in his harbors. But Zebulun, that tribe, risked his life, and so did Naphtali on the heights of the battlefield. Quite a song. Evidently, some of the tribes of Israel just found it too hard to follow Deborah and Barak. Some decided just to stay home, tend their sheep. Others played it safe, remaining in the harbors, fishing and shipping. After all, they had businesses to run, fishing, uh, families to feed. They found it difficult to interrupt their lives and to give up their preferences, their comfort zones, their responsibilities. But sometimes that's what it takes in order to walk into God's victory. It takes following leaders because they're trying to direct us and lead us in positive directions, but it will compete with how we use our time at times. Sometimes our personal preferences will get challenged. Sometimes our comfort zones will get challenged. Sometimes our schedule will get challenged. The tribes of Reuben, Gilead, Dan, Asher, they all stayed home, but the tribes of Zebulun, Naphtali, risked their lives, left their homes, left their work, and followed Deborah and Barak into battle. And it was enough for the Lord to give a great victory. See, good things happen when, pe when leaders lead and people gladly follow. And that's why Deborah praised the Lord. And this goes right at the heart of one more reason to follow the leader. Leaders lead God's people to accomplish God's plan. They don't just help us restrain ourselves from uh, bad impulses, which is kind of what I've been talking about the last couple of days in earlier messages, but they, they do more. They lead us to positive places towards God's victory. Think of what could happen with Hometown Church if leaders led eagerly, actively, and rallied the church with events like Mission to Our City and Kingdom Builders, and, and then the people gave up preferences and gladly followed. What can happen if people gladly gave up comfort zones and gladly gave up preferences and followed? What if we all took the hill together? See, good things happen when leaders lead and people gladly follow. This is how leaders serve the church. This is how the leaders get underneath the church and serve the church by leading people to positive places. Otherwise, by and large, we wouldn't have the self-initiative to do it on our own. Somebody needs to lead. And of course, this can be all traced back to our relationship with God. Good things happen when God leads and people gladly follow. Good things happen when God leads and people gladly follow. And may we gladly follow because God gladly provided for us Jesus, even though we were his enemies. And may the good news of Jesus so touch our soul that we become glad followers of God. And then we begin to see how God works through leaders to help us advance his kingdom. Thanks for listening.